episode of Speak Out. I am your host, JL. And I am your host, Dino L. And we have an exciting guest for you today. Oh my goodness. Today, we are talking, Dino, we are talking to eight-time Olympian, Lee Haney. Yeah, and, baby! And we are discussing training your mind for success. So, I would wow. like to welcome eight-time Olympian. Yes! Entrepreneur, fitness to fitness trainer to the stars, and author of Fitted in the Age, Lee Haney. Yes. Welcome to Welcome. Speak Out. Thank you, yeah. thank you, thank you. It's a pleasure being here, and uh, wow, this is fantastic. Love what you're doing. Thank you so much. Lee, I'm just going to start off. I, I have to start off. What were your experiences as a child growing up in Spartanburg, South Carolina? Well, you know, <laughs> awesome, man. I, that's all I can say is that sighting as a kid growing up in a small town and being blessed to have a mother and a father yes. was really awesome. Grandparents, you know, it was a whole neighborhood, family uh, mm. type of community. And, I mean, as kids, we ran, we played, we jumped, we, we did what other kids do. And we had room for our imagination wow. because we wow. lived mm-hmm. in the country. <clears throat> And I had this this thing in me as a youngster that I wanted to uh, be Hercules and Samson. All right so now. I would fantasize about being that. So when my dad would give me a chore to do, he said, okay, I want you to go down to the garden and get the rocks out and so forth and have that done before I get home from work. Uh, then I would look at it as a way to help build my muscles. Wow. So I would put the rocks in the wheelbarrow, carry the wheelbarrow and do my thing because I knew that uh, in doing so, it would make me stronger and bigger. Wow. So I could become that Samson or that Hercules. Oh, well, okay, Amen. I'm sorry. I'm having a clump moment where it's just like, Hercules, Hercules, <laughs> Hercules. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Continue. So the, that's, that's, that's how it all began for me. I never will forget uh, at the age of six years old, me and my brother was outside in the yard hanging out playing. And my dad had this beautiful baby blue Fairlane Ford. Mm. And something said to me, you were able to throw this bowler over your dad's car. Oh, boy. oh no. Something. I don't know what that something was. Oh. I picked that bowler up, and I took four or five steps back, and I ran and threw it into the air, and it didn't go over the car. Oh, my goodness. Oh. Hercules had made a bad mistake. It landed oh. on that glass of my dad's car, and my brother, who was sitting there looking, he was nine. He was nine at the time, three, year, three and a half years older than me. Uh-huh. He just looked. He knew. I was going to be killed by my dad. Wow. But my dad came to the door when he heard this bang and said, who did it? And I cannot tell a lie. Hercules. I said, my brother. My brother. <laughs> 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 it was a terrible day for him. He got the beating of his life. And I watched it happen. Man, that's an awful thing. But I didn't listen. I wasn't going to tell, tell him I did. Why should I get killed when my brother could get killed? He shouldn't have allowed you to do it. So. <laughs> I think that's why I dated got it. But you know, my dad looked at me, uh-huh. and he looked at my brother and said, he couldn't have did that. He mm-hmm. couldn't have done that. But he, mm-hmm. what he didn't realize at the time, there was a Samson and a Hercules in that little bitty boy. So, Amen. Yeah, so you started on the right track, and you, you were able to pick it up. But I was you, able weren't able, it up. you weren't able to take it to the finish line. And, and I couldn't <laughs> figure out why it didn't go over the car. Because of, I visualized and saw that happening. It was right. the wrong vision thing. <laughs> well, well, when did you get the vision to pursue um, bodybuilding as a as a career? And what did your family think about it at the well, time? Well, you know, when we would go to the grocery store, I would rush to the newsstand to look at the magazines. And it was mm-hmm. there I saw people like Robbie Robinson, Arnold Schwarzenegger, other muscle guys. And, mm-hmm. and I was a big fan of Hercules, the TV show, and Samson and so forth. So that's really where I started to get my education. And when at the age of... Uh, 11 years old, 10, 11, I asked my parents for a set of weights and they mm. got them for me and I read my little Charles, Charles Atlas book and I followed those training principles and I became conscious of nutrition, how I should mm. eat to take care of my body and wow. the seeds were planted there. By the time I was 19, I won the Teenage Miss America. Wow. Beat uh, over 100 teenagers from all over the United States. So I was off to an incredible start. Now, did you play any other sports during that time, like when you were in high school or yes, middle I school? Yes, played, I played football. Okay. played football in uh, uh, junior high school, uh, high school. 
Uh, I, I didn't have much luck at it, although I did receive a full scholarship to Livingstone College okay. in Salisbury, North Carolina. But uh, it was there that uh, I found my love for bodybuilding. It just mm. kept calling me back. So mm-hmm. I, I reached out to one of my guidance counselors. I still love him today. His name is James Lambert, mm. nicknamed Pee Wee Lambert. But okay. he loved us kids. Very special guy. And I called him and said, Mr. Lambert, I really would love to put more of my energies into bodybuilding. But at the same time, I realized I got to have my education. Mm-hmm. I have a scholarship here. And I can't walk away from it if there's no funding available to uh, continue my education. Mm-hmm. And he said to me, uh, Lee, let me make a few phone calls. And he did. And I was able to receive what is called the Basic Education Opportunity Grant, mm-hmm. which allowed me to then forego the scholarship and return to Spartanburg Methodist College in my hometown and, uh, and pursue my education there. Wow. Lee, in, in your book, you quoted, fit at any age, you said, I distinctly recall praying one night before bed, Lord, if you see fit to make me the best this sport at this sport that I love so much, mm-hmm. I will go before the world and give you the praise and glory. What do you feel was a result of that prayer? You know, as a, as a youngster and having made Jesus Christ Lord and Savior of my life when I was nine years old, oh, wow. mm-hmm. I felt in my heart that I could ask him for anything because mm-hmm. I knew of his love for me. That's mm-hmm. what drew me mm-hmm. to salvation, his love. It wow. wasn't nobody had to coerce me into this. Mm-hmm. A, a child heard the gospel and believed the gospel. Mm. So I felt I could go to my father and ask him for anything. Wow. And that's, that was my that's, that was my request, if you see fit. Mm. And apparently he saw something, because I said it from the heart, and here I am today, using that gift to impact the world for good. Amen. Wow. Wow. So, um, I, I want to talk about, now first of all, before I continue on with your career, I love a good love story. Mm-hmm. I love a good love story. And you met your beautiful wife. When? Tell us about that. Second grade. Second sure, grade. Sure, was my second grade sweetheart. Oh, my goodness. And we've been married now for over 36 years. When wow. I saw her in the second grade, I thought she was the most beautiful thing in the world. She had this little curl heel right here. <laughs> the bang. Yeah. yeah, I had the bang. <laughs> <laughs> the little bunny rabbit teeth. You know, I'm like, oh, my goodness. And I, I'll never forget when we went to the movie for the first time, my uncle and aunt. Took us. They was our chaperone. She was 15. I was 16. Mm. And man, she let me hold her hand. Oh, <laughs> I thought they would have her. <laughs> and at the age of 19, when I prepared for the Teenage America, I ran out of money. I was working uh, at a grocery store, bagging groceries. Mm. But I ran out of money to pay my entry fee. And Shirley at the time was working at the library as a page. Mm-hmm. And so, unknown to her mom, she cash her check and gave me the money to pay for my entry fee. Wow. wow. Get a battery going my See, car. that's true love. That's yes. true love. I never that's forgot it. Yes. It was blood money, Dean. Mm. Yes. I've been paying every cent. <laughs> <laughs> it was more investment. You're not, I, I don't live with my wife now. <laughs> you're not complaining. I'm not complaining. Uh, uh. That's, that's, that's my best friend, you know. That's, that's, that's my world. Oh, Amen. that is beautiful. Lee, out of your many accomplishments and accolades, including being an eight-time Mr. Olympia, what do you feel was one of your greatest and why? Mm -hmm. I feel my greatest was the rearing of my family, Mm -hmm. my kids. I have a son, Joshua, who's 32 now. Mm -hmm. Joshua uh, uh, played football at the Citadel. He's an IT specialist. Mm -hmm. Uh, My daughter, Olympia, she uh, finished at SCAD. She uh, went on a full scholarship to play volleyball. And she's the director of a wedding at Callaway Garden. So okay. uh, I'm blessed to be there for them. I never will re- uh, forget the day in which Josh was graduating from the Citadel and they had a parents' day. I heard over the loudspeaker, I'd like to thank my dad for being here. Mm. Mm. And that resonated <laughs> like crazy, wow. you know. And so I, I thank God that I was there. There's so many dads missed that opportunity. Mm, mm-hmm. You know, they missed the rearing of their kids. If Very anything true. we can do, that's the greatest thing. Because the Lord said, 
be fruitful, multiply, yes. and replenish the earth. Yes. Mm -hmm. Kids is the fruit of our life. That's my legacy. And your Nothing blessing. else matters. Yeah. That's my blessing, my kids. If they're blessing the earth to be a blessing, my grandkids, mm -hmm. that's proof that Lee Haney lived. Wow. Now, Olympia, did that have anything to do with <laughs> she Mr. Olympia? She was my Olympia? ninth Olympia title. <laughs> <laughs> I really hate that she was the ninth one. Yes. All right. <laughs> Well, as, as Mr. Olympian, uh, what were some of your biggest obstacles um, in, term of, in, in terms of winning, like your first one? What were some of the things that you really had to work on in terms of getting training your mind for success? Well, you know something? I never, ever doubted my abilities mm -hmm. to be the best. I never saw myself less than being the best. And I've never, you know, had people ask me, what kind of obstacle you have to overcome? No. Mm -hmm. Because my faith was the very thing that refreshed me, mm -hmm. that gave me the, the strength to know that I could overcome anything because I knew if God was for me, nothing could be against me. Oh, so, boy. And, you know, and I, I, I really appreciate my mom, who's now 78. She would always sit by my bedside and share with me the, the wisdom of God and just talk to me. And she, she would say this one particular thing. She said, Son, if you put God first in your life, it'll take you around the world mm -hmm. in and her most has. simple way. That, and it has. I've been yes. over 30 different countries in the world. My I've been goodness. appointed by a president of the United States. I've done all of these things. And it's because of putting God first yes. and remaining humble. All of that. My dad was, he believed in hard work. He believed mm -hmm. in discipline. His son, whatever you do. Do it all of your heart and all your might. Don't halfway do anything. Mm. And nobody's better than you. Mm. They put their pants on one leg at a time just like you do. Mm -hmm. Don't halfway do anything. So having the two of them to shape and mold that into my mind, into my psyche, made all the difference. Mr. Haney, you were talking about faith, but I'd like you to go a little further on it. How has your faith allowed you to influence others that you meet? spiritually as well as politically? Well, you know, Dean, one of the things that, uh, you know, that, that has helped me over the years is my faith in God and the fact that, uh, you know, he tells us to meditate on his word. Mm, yes. You know, you can only get it, you know, faith come by hearing. And hearing, hearing by the, by word, the word of God. God. You got to hear it. You got to get it inside of your spirit. You, then you have to put it to work. Mm. And then it's got to be planted on the solid foundation. You All can't right. put it on sand. All you do right. it, you're watch away to the, at the first trial. So I believe God and take him at his word. If he said I can do all things through Christ to strengthen me, then I can do all things. Amen. Then I also understand that, uh, you know, uh, things don't happen overnight. It's seed time and harvest. You have mm -hmm. to sow seeds. It's going to be amazing to see when people leave from this journey to the heavenly journey to mm. see all of the things that were waiting on them if they hadn't given up. Wow. You know, just, I mean, that's going to be a, mm -hmm. a real eye opener. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to leave no, nothing going to turn. I want to believe. I want to work hard. I want to do what I have to do. So I always try to encourage other people as the word of God encouraged me, you know. Uh, and then, of course, when you're doing things, you got to add up the cost. Mm -hmm. I mean, really, the mm -hmm. Bible tells us that too. So you just can't just go blindly and just jump on things. You got to do your research. Yes. You got to get wisdom. You got to ask somebody who's been there, done that. Mm -hmm. Okay, how do I need to, what do you think here? And that helps a lot. You know, you want to get godly counsel. Yes. Mm -hmm. So all of that's real important. I pass that along with, to people, you know, particularly younger people. You know, I'm 60 now, but I always try to push that. Uh, in, in, in the face of young men. I saw a young man a few weeks ago. You know, he didn't know who I was, but mm -hmm. we just got into a conversation. He said he just got engaged. And, but guess what? I invited him to, to, to our class. Mm -hmm. So he okay. can come and be around brothers like us who've been there, done that, wives, kids, so he can grow from that. Because I told him, you're going to need that. So you, you want to start your journey the, the right way. So the foundation is everything. Yeah. Lee, speaking, speaking of that in terms of uh, talking to young people, you also have Haney's Harvest House uh, where you mentor young boys. Can you share with us about that and how that yes. came about? Yes, yes. Haney's Harvest House is a, is a joy that me and my wife has is, is shared together for 
whew, since 1996, wow. maybe earlier than that. And <laughs> it started out with me and my, one of my buddies, we were coaches for mm-hmm. you know little league football mm-hmm. team. We got beat <laughs> terrible. <laughs> <laughs> we were big guys, but mm-hmm. man, we got slaughtered every, but what ended up happening we were taking the boys' shoes and working with their moms and doing that sort of thing. And I, t- I said, Jack, I said, hey, man, you know what? I call him Big Jack. That was mm-hmm. the other coach. I said, we need to continue this, man. These beyond the foot. We didn't win no games, okay. but at least we won the hearts of some young men and we can mm-hmm. help their moms. Mm-hmm. That's the biggest thing. That's the biggest yeah. thing. So we started Haynes Harvest House there, and we've uh, formed relationships with different churches and and we don't have to advertise. It's just mm-hmm. one mother tell another mother. Right. You know, and so that's what we've been doing. We have a program called Raising a Modern Day Night, where we take a young man from eight all the way to 17, 18 years old. They uh, pass different, uh, different rites of passage. You first you're a page, then you become a squire, then you become a knight. Okay. Knights are the ones ready to head off to, to college or trade school. Some of them, we got some in the military. Mm-hmm. One of my young men is in Germany now, Air Force, he's four years over there. One of my other young men, Larry Heath, Larry's is a captain in, a, in the army. Mm-hmm. He's in Afghanistan, also now has a degree in political science. He was eight years old when we got him. Wow. So, you know, these are just a few of the success stories. So we've been running this program for years, and the young men who grew up in the program, they are now the counselors. Wow, that's so they'll cool. say to me, Mr. Haney, you know what, this is what we want to do. And we just had a discussion yesterday with one of my brothers at uh, Atlanta Metropolitan College mm-hmm. with their technical training. Because when you're 12, 13, you really don't know what you want to right. be. Exactly. Fifth time. Exactly. So we're going to show them, give them a glance into all of these different, different skill sets that may be the one for them. Yes. So at least we put it in front of them. So we're excited about that new phase of what we're doing. And that's, that's I'm sorry, uh, Dean, that's building community. That's part of activism. Absolutely. To be able to be that mentor, yeah. to be able to um, not just achieve success for yourself, mm-hmm. but to be able to build another generation and, a, and build community. And that's what it's all about. That's why the good Lord got us in the earth. You yes. Know, if you're whole existence is just about minding your own business, mm. then you got a problem. You you know, and God's grace and mercy allow you to be selfish for a period of time. You don't know when they're going to run out. Yeah. But the true purpose of your plan is to impact share. the world for good. To Absolutely. Share. That's right. It's Absolutely. a lonely place to be if you're not doing that. Yes. Everything is about me and not about serving people or doing the will of God in the earth. Mm-hmm. Now, do your mentors... You owned a farm at one time, yeah. didn't you? Mm-hmm. Was, was that part of the That mentor? was Haney Harvest House. That's okay. where we would have the program. Okay. All right. Now we have it at a church in Forest Park called the Rock Church. Okay. A gentleman by the name of Pastor Michael Clinscale. Wonderful brother, him and his wife. We have a workout facility there with the weights. We yes. have a full okay. basketball court. I'm sure you, you really appreciate <laughs> that. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> then we have, uh, we have the... Uh, the uh, other uh, facility for computers. So we still work and adding different different things to it. So it's full blown. We also got some donkeys. <laughs> so wow. the kids get to see animals, that kind of Real thing wow. too. So, yeah. Well, uh, you know, Lee, you have, um, as you said earlier, you have traveled the world. God has blessed you to travel the world. Um, you've won so many titles yes. and, and awards. And some people may know and some may not know, but you're also a trainer. And Mm -hmm. not only have you written a book in terms of fit at any age, but you also have detox products. And you've Mm -hmm. also trained many famous, well-known athletes and stars. So I just, I know I just mentioned a lot, but I'm not going to tell, I'm not going to name drop for you. (laughs) I'm going to have you name drop for us and tell us how you came into being an author and some of your um, products that you have to help people. Well, uh, you know, having achieved the title of Mr. Olympia and, you know, I had a show on uh, ESPN years ago called Totally Fit. I had a show on the Trinity Mm -hmm. Broadcast Network. Uh, also in Sports South, so it's, it, it has given me a, a voice to mm-hmm. share health and fitness. I created a website, LeeHaney.com, 
where people can go there and get different information. So the name is, uh, thank the Lord, I got a good name. It's been established. Amen. Amen. So I've had people to come to me and wanted me to create exercise and fitness programs for them because my experience has been there, done that. I don't have a, what you would call a doctor's degree in nutrition, right? but I know how nutrition works. Yes. Yes. I haven't have read about it. I've lived it. Mm. Mm-hmm. So when I write a program, I can write it from experience. Mm. I've had people who were certified on the different organization, even with degrees, mm-hmm. to come to me and say, okay, I got, it. got all those not, but how do I put it together? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So they don't understand systems. You know, wow. for instance, when you look at some of the shows, they got people trying to lose weight on these shows. You have ladies running up and down steps, jumping up and down, doing jumping jacks. It's the worst thing in the world. Mm. Jumping the rope, worst thing in the world for wow. a lady who may be 20, 30, 40 pounds overweight. Because when you hit the floor, your knees have a tendency to go in. Oh, wow. Which can create ACL and meniscus tears. Mm. So this type of things... Your average trainer don't understand. I've been there, done that. Wow. I know what it looked like. Wow. And I've lectured all over the world in doing so. So Fit at Any Age is a book that I wrote uh, a little over a year ago. Mm-hmm. Talking about what exercise and nutrition should look like as we age. Okay. And you want to work on age management, fitness, time you come into to the world. Okay. I had my granddaughter in my home this morning. Guess what? I've given her oatmeal. Mm-hmm. With a little cane sugar to sweeten with and some cinnamon. Mm-hmm. She was enjoying it. Guess what? That's healthy fiber for her body, healthy carbohydrates, mm. low glycemic index. Mm-hmm. Then I gave her water and orange juice, vitamin C for the mm-hmm. immune system. So this should happen time and coming into the world. Mm-hmm. So, but, so exercise, fit at any age, should resemble the same deal. Okay. You can't exercise the same way you did when you were 19. Absolutely. I can 20, test it. 30 <laughs> or 40. You know, we can't do jumping jacks. So it shouldn't, it's, we shouldn't because okay. the, your knees and hips and back has been walking around, which in my case for 60 years. Mm-hmm. So they've gotten somewhere. Although I feel good, right. I know I can go a little bit over the edge mm-hmm. if I did the wrong thing. Okay. So this book talks about what it should look like. How it should feel it cautions you mm-hmm. about certain mm-hmm. things. So it's an excellent book. It's available on Barnes and Nobles. Uh, also, Amazon has it. It's okay. Kindle. Okay. So it's an excellent read. Okay. And some of those, some of those people that have benefited from your training, um, as I said, I don't want to name drop for you. Like, <coughs> I'll drop. Come on, speak, speak it out. out. Speak I'll out. Speak out. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And then yeah. Holy speak Spirit. out. Okay. Right. <laughs> yeah. Speak yeah. out right now about yeah. it. Yeah. Steve Harvey. I've worked wow. with Steve for the last uh, twelve years or so. Wow. Okay. So we became great friends over a period of time. And uh, his wife, I've trained her. Uh, there are kids at the time I worked with them also. Okay. Steve is more. He's a little bit more hardcore. He liked a bit of the bodybuilding style training, mm-hmm. whereby his wife likes more functional fitness, mm-hmm. which is more age management, which I talk about in my book. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, then I've trained, I've trained people like Mr. Lewis Gossett. Mm-hmm. Wow. I've worked with him for the last few wow. years. I've mm-hmm. trained Ivana Holofield, Gary Sheffield, Shannon Shaw, uh, just to name a few. You know, uh, this one lady I have in my book, Renee. Renee was a cancer survivor, two-time cancer survivor. She was only 90 pounds when I got her. Wow. I have Renee up to 112, 113 pounds now. Wow. Wow. She's stronger than she's ever been. She feels good. You know, it's a whole system that we do nutrition, the training, and then I have a, with the, the, a very good uh, a medical doctor mm-hmm. to watch what's going on in their systems in their body. So everything is connected to everything. And how do you, how do you help people that you're training and they... They're saying in their mind, Lee, Lee, I can't do this. Lee, I've never done that before. Lee, I, I've, I've tried to lose weight before, but I, it's never helped. Or I tried to get healthy, but I can't. Yeah, I start them off a little bit at a time. Mm-hmm. Take baby steps, you mm-hmm. know. We make small accomplishments. One of my clients yesterday, Mr. Casey, if you're familiar with the battery and all of that highway road, well, that was his work as, oh, okay. as an engineer. And uh, within the last... Oh, two and a half, three months, he dropped 30 pounds. Wow. Nothing crazy. Mm-hmm. I said, okay, David, man, we, you, you're flying, you're going here, you're going there. We can't be doing pasta and bread late in the evening. 
Mm-hmm. You can't be hanging out with the, you know, with the crew and <laughs> eating, man. We got to cut back because as men, as we start to put on more body fat, our body started to produce estrogen, mm-hmm. you know, which is a feminizing hormone for a man. So the body fat, you know, the extra weight, the man boobs, that kind of stuff is a bad sign, a very bad sign. Heart so, disease, all of that. Mm-hmm. So, Lee, is what I'm hearing you say for your book, fit at any age, that this is for everyone. That book is for everybody. Every, I don't care what age, functional training can be done right in the comfort of your home. Mm. Wow. Matter of fact, I have an exercise video, a 30-minute 30 body, a 30 minute total body workout, and it's using functional training. But I explain functional training in the book there also. Mm-hmm. So you can do that right in your home. You don't have to join a gym. Mm-hmm. A lot of people think I got to join a gym. I got to have this miraculous stuff to make me look better. No, mm-hmm. first you got to make up your mind. Just mm-hmm. one step at a time. I get people saying, well, I will lose 30 pounds. Look, let's start with two pounds first. Mm-hmm. Then we'll go to five. Mm-hmm. And then once you get into a groove, then you're gone. Mm-hmm. You, you have to buy into it for yourself. My. You have to be, you got to get your mind mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. You have to be intentional about your health. Wow. Mm-hmm. Your health is your wealth. If you don't take care of your body, it will right, not take now. care of you. You get sick, all of your attention is then about how do I get well. Mm-hmm. Think about how much wealth you lose focusing on how to get well. Yeah. Instead of being well and focusing on the next invention mm. or your next idea. My you can't goodness. get wealth without health. Forget it. You get wow. poor real fast. Wow. When I deal with professionals like a Steve Harvey, people like that, time Steve finishes workout. And we trained at 5 a.m. Mm-hmm. Time he finished his workouts, first thing he do is have his green drink. Live enzymes. He put live food into his body because guess what? He got to stay alive to make sure that all of his business ventures and his crew mm-hmm. is still able to make a living. Right. If he fails, the rest of it fails. Right. So all of us are our own business. Yeah. We got to take our own personal enterprise. Don't Buy into the, well, I'll do it later. No, it's part of your job. Just like your job is part of your job. If you don't take care of your body, then you will deal with health issues and you will crumble and you will lose wealth, guaranteed. Well, Lee, how were you able to stay in bodybuilding and, and stay an athlete all those years and not do damage to your body as you got older? Like Because some athletes... You know, if they're a boxer, they may experience certain damage or a football player, certain damage when they get older or even bodybuilders. You know, if they can continue, press, you know, um, put in the extra pressure on their knees and on their shoulders. But how were you able to continue to maintain your health? So now as you grew older, you still still, still healthy. Right. right. Well, you know what? Um, one of the philosophies that I've handed down over the years is this. Exercise to stimulate, not annihilate. Mm. Oh, wow. Exercise to stimulate, not annihilate. And see, what I did in the world of bodybuilding is health and fitness oriented. It's not a traumatizing sport like football or boxing. Mm. Okay. And that's all these totally different animals. Okay. Those guys get busted up. Yes. But okay. that's part of their job. That's their cycle. Gladiator. I don't want anything hitting me. Okay. You know, I just want to look good, feel good, be functional. It's all about okay. health and fitness. So my sport blends into the, the, uh, the population, into the masses. Okay. Because you want to feel good. You want to look mm-hmm. good. You want to be functional. So in fitting in age, I tell you how to do that. Because I've done it. Of course, I've done it on a whole nother level. Mm-hmm. But because of using the right science of training, mm. knowing that, okay, pineapple is an anti-inflammatory, which helps my joints. Okay. Turmeric helps to keep my joints healthy. Mm-hmm. Drinking 8 to 10 glasses of water, they help to flush my system. Mm-hmm. Drinking my vegetables, my spinach, my multi-minerals, uh, all of those complex helps my body, mm. my beets. All of these different things, my ginger, all of these different things I learned about, I purposely learned about, and I use them to take care of my health. So I feel good. I don't wake up feeling bad. Mm -hmm. I don't wake up with no headaches. Mm -hmm. I don't wake up with none of these things that people complain about. I wake up ready to go to work. 
I'm normally up about 4 o'clock in the morning or 4.30, yeah. wow. wide awake, ready to go oh, because wow. my system has rebooted mm. mm-hmm. because I gave it the right food wow. and the right amount of rest. So that's important. You know, so fit it in the age takes you through step. It talks about juicing, mm-hmm. live enzymes for a live body. If you eat dead food, you're going to be a dead body. Mm-hmm. French fries, burgers, <laughs> sodas, none of those things give life. None of it give life. That's true. It don't give life. Chicken wings does not give oh, life. Oh, Lord. I, I what you name is. It don't give life. It kills. All right. So, I mean, if you, I'm not saying don't enjoy yourself. If you want to do that sometime, fine. But guess what? Me and Miss mm-hmm. Haney have our green drink on a daily basis. I give it to her. She has her three ounces. I have my three ounces. We do that mm-hmm. once and twice a day to keep our bodies healthy and alive with live enzymes. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Lee, if you had, in closing, if you had anything that you would like to say at this time that you want the multitude to hear, mm-hmm. what would that be? If you're, we're going to be here in the earth, as the Lord told us, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth. In order to be fruitful, you have to in yourself be fruitful. You got to take care of your health. That's number one. The Lord said, our medicine is food and food is our medicine. Mm-hmm. I'm a minister of fitness. That's what I do. Mm. So you take care of your body. Yes. That's the first thing. Because if you don't take care of your body, you can't take care of yourself or anything else. And the Bible tells us to work diligently with our hands that we may have some to distribute. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm able to distribute to the Haney Harvest House, the mentoring mm-hmm. program for yes. boys. Because what? I can work. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I can gain finances. I acquire wealth so I can then pass it along. Yes. Mm-hmm. You can't do that sick. Right. Take care of your bodies. Mm. You know, African-American community that where we're from, I'm from, we're number one in heart disease, high blood pressure, stroke. Name a bad disease, we're, we're, we're at the top of the ladder. So we have to do better in being uh, intentional about our health. Yes. Mm-hmm. That's what I'll say. Be intentional. And for those who want more information about my book and the different things that I teach, they can go to LeeHaney.com, order the book. I'll give them it's a, a great book. autograph, and, uh, and I'll be more than happy to help them. Matter mm-hmm. of fact, I got a head off of a young lady who wants to get ready for Well, I say young lady. She, and I have my she's autograph. 49. Okay. She's 49. She's ready for her first finger competition. All right. So I'll do her and get her set up. Well, Lee, it's been a pleasure. Yes, it's it been an honor. honor. Thank yes. you for what have you do. You Speaking out. Yes. yes. Thank you so much speak out. for Speak Out. And we always want to encourage you. Remember that you too have a voice. So make sure you. Speak out. Speak out. I'm Jewel I'm Dino L. And with the great Lee Haney. All right. Amen. Yes.